A reading from the Gospel of Luke. As Jesus came near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, If you, even you, had only recognized on this day the things that make for peace. But now they are hidden from your eyes. Indeed, the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up ramparts around you and surround you and hem you in on every side. They will crush you to the ground, you and your children within you, and they will not leave within you one stone upon another because you did not recognize the time of your visitation from God. What do you think of when you hear those two words, Jesus wept? If you're like me, I think about that kind of pithy saying people say it's the shortest Bible verse and that's the one they know, Jesus wept. And of course, that comes from the story of Jesus at the tomb of Lazarus, his friend, and he's with his other friends, Mary and Martha, who are in deep grief over the fact that the brother has died and Jesus wept. And we we think of that as the icon of Jesus, Jesus and Jesus' tears. But here we have equally poignant Jesus looking out over Jerusalem. We're at a point in the gospel story. Jesus has just, we've just had the, the procession of the palms, his triumphal entry to Jerusalem. And Jesus, and he's after this, just about to go and clear the temple, the money changers. So in between those two those two scenes, we have this one where he looks out over Jerusalem and he cries. He weeps, he mourns for a city, for the tragedy of the fact that they have had the opportunity to grasp on to the deep truth of God's love and God's peace, and they've missed it. They've not managed to do it this time. And he's crying, um, weeping, mourning for the fact that Jerusalem, not having been able to grasp on to what has come among them, the kingdom of God is embodied in him, and knowing that they won't be able to, to grasp and hold on to it, he, he sees and foretells the destruction that's awaiting them and the, the continuing on in history of their inability to to find that deep peace rooted in justice and love and rooted in God. Jesus might well be looking right past Jerusalem to us in our context this day, in our cities, in our nations, in our churches, in our families. He might be looking at us with those same eyes of compassion and love and grief and mourning and, um, poignancy, say, oh, if only you could, if only you could, if only you would grasp on to the peace of God, which is on offer and has been on offer and will be on offer. If only you could and you would grasp on to it. Oh, how different the world would be. So this sobering passage, um, let it be a challenge to you and me this day to look again at our own assumptions, the way we order our life, the way we prioritize our life, our openness to this message from Jesus that peace is central to his message. I think sometimes that gets lost. Certainly the center is love, but, but peace is always on his lips, including the first, first word to the disciples and his appearance to them in the upper room after the resurrection, peace. It's, it's a central concern of Jesus, and it should be a central concern, concern of yours and mine as individuals and in all of the institutions that we serve, in all of the communities that we inhabit. Where are we as that voice that is pointing to the deeper, truer peace that is to be found in, in God and in gospel, gospel living um, that reminds us that temporary political victories or temporary human dramas, um, external events, those, those are always going to be with us. But when we're truly rooted in God, there's also a deep peace that permeates everything that we're about. 
So may God bless you with a sense of that deep peace this day. May you find the ways that you can act locally and radiate radiate out globally this sense of God's peace. And may God bless us all with a collective will to bring that peace into clearer and um, starker view for the world around us. May God bless you and God keep you this day and always. Amen.